and welcome to Amazing Psychology. I'm Priya Verghese and I'm here to help you with your studies in psychology. If you've taken an IGNO program, you are at the right place. And I'm hoping that the content that we produce will be of help for you as you continue your course and complete it. So let me tell you what we're going to get started with today. We're talking about lifespan psychology, which is the second subject in the IGNO course. And I will be dealing with a certain portion of unit one. So let's get started. So there's this question that everyone's asking, what is lifespan psychology? Lifespan psychology is basically the constant changes that a person goes through through their entire lifespan, which is basically from the time they were conceived to infanthood, to early childhood, adolescence, adulthood, old age, and finally till death. So if you think about it, every human being is unique. See, even you are not uh, the same person as your sister or brother or your mother or your father. Each one of us is different, but there are lots of similarities between us also. We are different because of the um, environmental circumstances we've been through, the experience that we've had, the choices that we have made. But we are also very similar because of the biological changes that all of us go through and because of certain psychological developments that happen in human beings all across their lifetime. Now, developmental changes can happen because of environment, it can happen because of learning, or it can also happen because of genetics. The changes that occur because of genetics is known as maturation. Most people will think that it's either because of genetics or because of your learning process, but actually it's a combination of the two. So what kind of developmental processes are we talking about? A human being goes through lots of changes. You know that we have um, the ability to gain motor control and the more we grow, the more motor control we have, which is basically the skills of using our hands, walking, all of those things. Then there are social changes that happen, which is our interaction with the rest of society. There are also cognitive changes that happen, which is related to the brain and the memory and learning capacity. So there are plenty of changes that happen during this developmental phase. So cognitive development, if you talk about that, it involves uh, memory, learning, problem solving capacity, um, then there's conceptual understanding, there's uh, development of morals in a person, the identification as self in a person, um, personality, all of this actually falls within cognitive development. Now when you talk about development, you would think that maybe it's just this continuous process and from the time you are born till the time you die, you're just going in this very smooth pathway. But that's not exactly how it happens. It goes through waves. So when you say waves, there are certain stages where there's a spurt of growth and then you just continue a little bit and then there's another spurt of growth and then you continue. That's usually how development happens within human beings. So now you may have a question, what's the point in learning about all these developments that happen in a human being? Why should one study it? So basically what a human development study helps us with is, it helps us to enable another person to utilize all the opportunities that they have got and realize their dreams and become a fulfilled person. So if you think of a person who has not been able to uh, go through any of these phases properly, their growth will be stunted and accordingly their ability to perform in life will also be very, very different. So by learning developmental psychology, we will be able to help people to attain the maximum potential that they can. Now, the important thing to note is that an individual should be able to express their interests and desires in such a way that it fulfills them but at the same time, it stays within the moral values of society. So basically what we're trying to do with developmental psychology is to make sure that the human being is healthy and capable of achieving what they want, but at the same time in such a way that it doesn't harm the rest of society. Okay, so let's talk about growth and development. So what is growth? Growth refers to the changes that a child goes through from the time of birth till about the adolescent period. Now, if you think about it, the World Health Organization has been doing lots of studies on kids all over the world. And there's a reason why they do it too. One particular study was the correlation between the height and the weight of a child during different periods of their growth. 
So if you look at the chart that I have over here, you can see the growth pattern of girl children between the age of zero and two. And you can see that the greater the weight, the more the increase in size. Now this, the reason why we do this study is, when you look at this, you get an average and that average gives you an idea of what the height of a child should be if they are X uh, amount of kgs. So if a child is below the standard or the average, then we need to do an investigation on why the child is uh, underweight. It could be because the child is malnutritioned. If that's the case, then we need to give intervention. And the same could be the case of a child who's extremely overweight. And if the weight does not correspond to a likelihood of increase in size, then maybe what we could understand is the child is obese and also needs some kind of intervention. So these kind of studies help us keep a child in balance. So there are lots of factors that affect a child's personality. If you look at it, there are mainly environmental and social factors. A child as they are growing goes through a lot of learning from their surroundings, from the environment that they are in. It could happen in conversations between family members, it could happen between playtime with neighborhood kids, it could happen in, during functions, it could happen during um, gatherings, conferences, anything. A child learns a lot from the surroundings and the social aspects that they are exposed to. Another thing that uh, affects a child's personality is cultural influences. And you must be knowing just as much as I how much television and music has influenced us. Long back, maybe during our parents' generation and even before, we just had um, Indian music over here. But now we have pop culture, we have external American music coming in, there's all sorts of amalgams. And so that has influenced how children perceive themselves and what their personality develops to be. Another few factors that um, affect the personality are the place where the child is born and also the biological factors of the child. As children grow, they learn more and more how to use what they have been given. Like they learn to use their brain and their cognitive skills, they learn how to acquire knowledge, they learn how to use their motor skills to move around, they learn how to interact with people in society, how to build relationships, how to love people, how to care for people. So there are lots of learning that happens during the childhood and adolescent period. Now amongst all these changes and developments that we see, four, four of them, are actually very similar across all children. So let's just take a look at what those four are. The first is physical. Perhaps physical growth is the most obvious of all of the growth changes that we see. So during physical growth, a biological change happens and because of that biological change, kids grow from the time of birth till adolescence, they go through a lot of childhood changes, their limbs grow longer, and once they hit puberty, a lot of changes further happen in their body. All of these biological changes are more or less similar amongst all human beings. But we also, when you talk about biological, we're also referring to motor control changes that happen. You know how a child is. As soon as the baby is born, the baby learns how to crawl, then they start walking, they start running, and after that their skills develop further. Finally, they reach, they reach a stage where they are able to um, go for martial arts, do highly specific or precision-oriented um, physical work like parkour. Um, they're able to go into archery, shooting. All of this needs precision and motor control, which develops as a child grows. Now the second point is psychological and cognitive. So when we talk about this, this is the specific span of growth when a child learns to acquire information from their surroundings. Then they process the information in their brain and then they understand what it means and they apply it to different instances in life, in which uh, case it becomes knowledge to them. So from the point of acquiring the information from surroundings to the point of applying it in different instances in life, like uh, for example, how to talk to different people, how to empathize with people, emotional intelligence, how to build relationships, all of this falls under cognitive development. 
The third is social and environmental growth. So if you consider a child, uh, you will see that uh, they learn a lot from um, the society and the people around them. And there's also a change that happens in a child while that goes on. For example, they develop a sense of identity. Um, they un start understanding who they are, their personality grows, their interactions with people develop. Um, they learn to play with people, work with people, um, coordinate with different people. They start getting a hang of their own emotions as well as the emotions of others. This is also the time when a child's self-esteem develops and also their uh, sense of morality develops. Now when I say sense of morality, it is a sense of what is right and what is wrong. And the fourth thing is sexuality. So when you talk about sexuality and gender identity, when a child is growing, at first they will not have any understanding of the fact that they are a boy or a girl. But slowly, gradually as they grow, they understand that I am a boy, I am a girl. And this switches on to further understanding as they hit puberty, they start understanding that they have sexuality and they understand the changes in their body. So then comes the understanding of how to channel their sexuality properly. How much of it can be expressed appropriately in society and how it needs to be expressed. All of this understanding comes with growth. As I mentioned before, uh, many theorists have come up with different uh, theories about how children develop. Some of them have said that it's a continuous process, but there are others who actually lean more towards the concept that it's spurts of growth. There are certain periods of growth and then a resting period and then further periods of growth. So there are different um, theories about how development in childhood and children happens. But for uh, the sake of our understanding, I think we can go with the majority theory, which is that it happens in packets. Now, there are certain critical periods in development of a child. And when I mean critical periods, if something goes wrong during this time, it affects the child all the way into adulthood and throughout their entire life, unless some form of intervention is used. So if you think about it, when a child is born, um, if they're not given the, um, the cuddling that they need, the touch that is needed, the love and affection that they need, or even unconditional love, the child, um, you know, in such a case when they are given all of that, the child develops trust towards the parents and this trust later on gets transferred into other people in society. Now, if you think about a child who has been deprived of all these kind of stimulation, no love, no care, um, the child has had to fend for itself, the parents have been abusive um, and, and all sorts or, or the child was um, born to druggy parents. If that's the case then the child is missing a lot of the stimulation that is needed and because of these reasons the child doesn't trust its parents and the same mistrust is reflected onto society later. But in the case of a child who has been abused like this and has not received the stimulation needed if the child is transferred into foster care and receives parents, foster parents who do provide the child the stimulation and the care and the affection it needs, then the problem of mistrust can be solved and the child develops into a healthy human being. So that's it for today's class. I hope you enjoyed it. And if there's any questions that you have, please put it down into the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, if you have any suggestions for improvement, please let me know that as well. Uh, there's a subscribe button given below. Make sure that you click on it um, and please do join me for more amazing content yet again on another video soon. Thank you.